women's right to sexual pleasure and sexual satisfaction is enshrined in Islamic law. And I want to quickly discuss one hadith um, which Muslim scholars, Muslim jurists use as evidence of women's right to sexual satisfaction. And if a woman is not sexually satisfied in her marriage, she has the right to obtain a divorce. Now, this hadith, this famous hadith is known as the taste, the honey hadith. And it was narrated by a number of Muslim scholars like Al-Bukhari and Al -Mus and Muslim. Um, so I'll, I'll just describe, before getting into the hadith, just by way of background. So, and this hadith was mentioned in my book. I discuss it in the, in chapter one, Modesty, al -Haya, or haya in my book, A Taste of Honey, Sexuality and Erotology in Islam. So just by way of background, so before Islam, some of the Arabs used to divorce women repeatedly on a whim and then remarry them. So in order to put an end to this practice, in the Quran, Allah legislated that if a husband divorces his wife irrevocably, meaning he divorces her after a third time, the woman becomes prohibited for him to remarry unless she obtains a divorce from another man in a subsequent marriage. So just by way of um, context, the early Arabs, like I mentioned, used to marry and divorce women, marry them, then divorce them, marry them then divorce them and then when they're divorced obviously a woman she cannot remarry another man during her udda period like the waiting period so they'll keep them and then just before their udda period ends they'll remarry them again and then they'll so there's basically they're taking advantage of sexually exploiting women their wives so what allah um he legislated like, again to put an, in um an end to this barbaric practice where they're basically exploiting women um he prohibited husbands from remarrying their wife after like the third divorce like which is known as the irrevocable divorce um so unless they're only able to remarry that wife unless she remarries another man that and which this hadith is going to talk about and this is mentioned in um in the quran in surah baqarah and the verses is verse 229 and 230 when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says أو أو so basically this hadith is mentioned in so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in these two verses, divorce may be retracted twice, then the husband must retain his wife with honor or, sep or separate from her with grace. It is not lawful for husbands to take back anything of the dowry given to their wives unless the couple fears not being able to keep within the limits of Allah. So if you fear that you will not be able to keep within the limits of Allah, there is no blame if the wife compensates the husband to obtain divorce. These are the limits set by Allah, so do not transgress them. And whoever transgresses the limits of Allah, they are the true wrongdoers. If a husband re-divorces his wife after the second divorce, she will not be lawful for him until she has taken another husband. If that one divorces her, there will be no blame if she and the first husband return to one another, provided they feel that they can keep within the bounds set by Allah. These are the, these are the limits set by Allah, which he makes clear for people of knowledge. So, this is the ruling that Allah has legislated in the Quran. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he clarified in the hadith, known as the taste of honey hadith, which you will talk about, that the marriage to the second husband must be consummated, i.e. there must be sexual penetration in order for that marriage to be considered to be valid. And this is, um, incident was related by Aisha, the wife of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with some variations in the, in the narrations. 
So it was reported that Aisha said a man divorced his wife and she married another man who later divorced her. The man had something similar to the fringe of a garment, al-hudba, but he was not able to give her what she wanted, i.e. sexual satisfaction. So he did not wait for long until he divorced her. She then went to the Prophet wasallam and said, Messenger of Allah, my first husband divorced me and then I married another man who entered upon me to consummate the marriage, but he had only liked the fringe of a garment. He did not approach me except once, during which he benefited nothing from me. So am I permitted to remarry my first husband? The Prophet ﷺ then said, No, you are not permitted to marry your first husband until the other husband tastes your honey and you taste his honey. Meaning, it's not it's not halal, it's not permitted to remarry the former husband, the first husband, until your husband, I the second husband, you've consummated the marriage until Hatta until you taste the honey. It's an Arabic expression meaning until you taste the honey, meaning have sexual intimacy, have sexual intercourse. In another narration related by Muslim on the authority of Aisha. The wife of Rifa'a came to the Messenger of Allah and said, I was married to Rifa'a, but he divorced me, making my marriage irrevocable. Afterwards, I married Abdul Rahman ibn al-Zubayr, but he possesses like the fringe of a garment. Thereupon, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smiled and said, Do you wish to return to Rifa'a? You cannot, not until you taste his honey and he tastes your honey. Abu Bakr was at the time near him, i.e. the Prophet wasallam, and Khalid bin Sa'id was at the door waiting for permission to enter. And he called out, Abu Bakr, do you hear what she is openly she is saying openly in the presence of the Messenger of Allah? So again, this is another version of the hadith. And you can see in this hadith, the woman is complaining that the husband had a fringe of a garment. Now the scholars say this, this um, fringe of a garment expression that she used or she indicated with um, the fringe of her garment, it indicates, it means one of two things. Either the man was impotent, or meaning he um, had erectile dysfunction, meaning he wasn't able to sustain an erection long enough to penetrate her, um, which is, a, um, which is a, a common problem in men, a sexual problem in men, or he had a very small penis. And he had such a small penis that he wasn't able to penetrate her. So that, that's what the fringe of the garment expression means. So that's what the woman was accusing um, the husband of of being al alin, meaning like he was impotent or had ED, erectile dysfunction, or he had a very small member. And what's obviously interesting is that Abu Bakr was with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when this woman approached him and was complaining about her husband's um, bedroom matter, her former husband. And then also was Khalid bin Sa'id who was surprised that a woman would say such a thing. So again, this illustrates that not every, some people are comfortable with women asking such intimate questions like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and there was other companions and other men who maybe felt that this was like not befitting of a woman. So it also shows that not everyone had the same, shall we say, tolerance level when it comes to women speaking about sex and intimate matters. And in another version of this taste of honey hadith, it was narrated by um, Ikrimah, but from Aisha, that Rifa'a divorced, divorced his wife, whereupon Abdul Rahman ibn Zubair al Qurayzi married her. Aisha said that the lady was wearing a green veil and complained to her, Aisha, about her husband and showed her a green mark on her skin caused by a beating. When the Messenger of Allah came and it was the habit of the women to support each other, Aisha said, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as the believing women. Her skin is greener than her clothes. Abdul Rahman heard that she had gone to the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so he came with his with two of his sons from another wife. The woman said, By Allah, I have done no wrong to him, but he is useless to me as this, holding the fringe of her garment. Abdul Rahman responded, By Allah, O Messenger of Allah, she has told a lie. I am very strong and can satisfy her, but she is disobedient because she wants to go back to Rifa'a, meaning her first husband. The message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if that is the case, then know that Rifa'a is not halal for you unless Abdul Rahman has tasted your honey. Um, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw the two young boys with Abdul Rahman. So he asked him, are these your sons? Abdul Rahman replied, yes. 
So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, you claim what you claim, i.e. he is impotent by Allah, but by Allah, these boys resemble him more than a crow remembers and resembles another crow. So again, in this version of the hadith, it shows that sometimes maybe a woman may accuse a man of being impotent when he's when that may not be the case. It may not be just because he may not be able to sexually perform with one woman. It does not necessarily mean he's impotent. Um, so again, that was like a dispute that happened during the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he wanted to clarify whether her accusation was correct. But also, again, with the he also wanted to clarify whether they had consummated the marriage. Now, if the woman wanted to go back to her former her first husband, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly stated in the Quran, she's not a woman's not permissible to remarry her first husband unless she's had another marriage and that marriage has been consummated, a valid marriage. So again, this is something which um, occurred during the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, in, in commentary of this hadith, the Prophet's acknowledgement demonstrates that he did not disapprove of the lady's question, nor did he consider it to be immodest. He was actually amused by her fringe of the garment euphemism and responded with his own delicate euphemism, indicating that he was not shocked or appalled by the sexual nature of her compl complaint. Imam al nawi said, the expression of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not until you taste his honey and he tastes your honey, is a metaphor, i.e. a kinaya, for sexual in intercourse, liken its pleasure to the pleasure and sweetness of honey. Ibn Hajar Asqalani said, the majority of scholars said the expression dhuqul usayla, meaning taste the honey, is a metaphor for sexual intercourse, which is the entering of the head of the man's penis into the woman's vagina. Abu Ubaid said, al usayla is a diminutive of asl, meaning honey. Um, al usayla is the pleasure of sexual intercourse. The Arabs used to name anything they found pleasurable honey. Al-Azhari said, the soundest opinion is that honey or sailor means the sweetness of intercourse, which occurs when the head of the penis enters the vagina. Taghib al-Hashafa fil farj. The Prophet ﷺ himself clarified the meaning of the term al usayla in a prophetic tradition related by Ahmad and Nisa'i, in which he is, was reported to have said, indeed al usayla is jima'ah. Indeed, honey is sexual intercourse. So the Prophet said, indeed, honey is sexual intercourse. That is what honey means. So again, this is um, a phenomenal hadith. And um, the woman in question, her name, um, the wife of, um, of Rifa'a, um, or the former wife of Rifa'a, her name was Tamima bint Wahab, and she was the dissatisfied wife of the either impotent husband or the husband who was unable to sexually satisfy her. Now, she was an outspoken, confident female companion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as mentioned, she was previously married to a man called Rifa'a. And after she divorced, after her divorce, she married another man called Abdul Rahman ibn Zubair. And again, she wanted to clarify clarification from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him because she wanted to return to her former husband. So again, what is fascinating about this particular exchange is that women's right to sexual satisfaction, like I mentioned, is enshrined in Islamic law. And the Muslim jurists, they look, this is an example of a hadith which demonstrates women's right to sexual satisfaction, um, as well as there's other hadiths that if a woman is not sexually satisfied, that she has the right to obtain a divorce. And the Prophet wasallam, he did not, um, say that she has to stay with Abdul, um, Abdul Rahman. He just clarified that if she wanted to go back to Rifa'a, then she needed to obviously have that marriage consummated. And of course, scholars have mentioned this needs to be a legitimate and valid marriage. You cannot, like, if a woman is in this situation, it is not permissible to then just marry someone with the intention of we're going to get married, consummate that marriage. And then divorce thereafter within a couple of days, weeks, what have you, and then go back to the former husband. This is a practice known as nikah um, tahlil, or in Urdu, I think it's called halala, like marriage and nikah halala. And this is where someone um, marries someone with the intention of divorcing them so that this woman can remarry her first her former husband. And this is haram. You cannot do that. And unfortunately, in, in some Muslim communities, um, there are even some religious figures, like even some imams who, and again, this is completely haram, 
they sell divorce. So if a woman is, you know, maybe has been divorced, they will marry her, consummate their marriage, have sex with her, and then divorce her. And this, again, they make money out of this, and they sell this, like, service called halal marriage. And this is completely haram. This is, you know, this is not from the religion of Islam. But the taste of honey hadith, again, it's a beautiful hadith in the sense that, you know, it shows that women were very confident and open to speak and ask about intimate matters or complain um, to the authority, in this case, of course, to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he did not rebuke them, but he clarified, again, what was Islamic ruling um, in terms of if a woman wanted to remarry her former husband, if she has been um, divorced after, you know, after she's received a third divorce. So again, this is um, a, a summary of, of the hadith, taste of honey hadith. If you want to read more about such hadiths and women's right to sexual satisfaction, as well as Islam's rich heritage in the tradition of erotology by all means feel free to read my book a taste of honey sexuality and erotology in islam as well as my other book which i think is here women of desire a guide to sexual a guide to passionate love and sexual compatibility so there are my two books um that i would recommend to learn more about women's right to sexual satisfaction and the erotology tradition in islamic history mm -hmm.